Okay, I wanted to make a quick follow-up video. I made a few videos just a little bit ago uh, describing the process of uh, s uh, reviewing uh, a model, uh, adjusting, fixing holes, and trimming it, and then exporting it. Um, I have another video that it goes over adding a base to a model. And uh, although that video is great, and I think it's uh, worthy of reviewing, I wanted to go ahead and touch on, on this case as well, because there's something that's sort of unique about this case that makes it important. Um, it, right now, the view you we have, uh, if I press the circle, the space bar, I am in the freedom, freedom of movement. If I change that, all of a sudden I'm restricted. I can only, I can't keep spinning the model. I'm limited in the how much I can rotate. And if I go to free, I can move it as much as I want. There are no limits. Okay. Why does that matter? Uh, why is that relevant? Well, sometimes it's it's good to know that trick in the software, but it also is relevant because I can make this model look like it's flat um, with the occlusal plane uh, in the, in the screen itself. And so right about here, it looks pretty level with the screen. But if I s press in the space bar, click on free, and let go and move it, you see how it's oriented? I cannot rotate it. And if I click on the view and show grid, you'll see that it's actually sort of canted. And that's just a, an issue with the way the image, uh, the video was created. That's just an issue with the with the way the models were generated uh, and the uh, model axis. Uh, I'm Anyway, it if you spend a little time oriented in it, you won't have to mess with this. But what I want to do is I want to show you how to add a base. But the problem is, is it's much easier if the model is aligned properly. And your instinct would, well my instinct is to go ahead and hit the T button or transform. It's also can be found in the edit right here. If I just click T, it allows me to orient the model. And as simple as that, it's straight. The problem is, if I go ahead and open up uh, and bring in the upper model, let's append. That's w that will allow us to bring it into the uh, this existing um, environment. You see that the byte is now cl overly closed on this side and open on this side. That's because we moved this model, but this one didn't move with it. So uh, I want you to make sure you're aware of that. So let's hit Control Z. And let's uh, hide that. How can we correct for that? Ac it's actually very simple. We'll go ahead and bring this in, append it, give it a second. It's a um, fairly large file. It's bringing in. So now it's in occlusion. You can see the the minor. Uh, let's get this out of the way. Uh, you can see the the con the occlusal contact areas. So anyway, they're in occlusion together. If we click on both of them and then click T for transform, we can then straighten them together. You can even look work on rotating them if they don't appear to be rotated properly. Um, so anyway, make sure you do that first. Hit accept. Now make sure that you re-export both models. If you only decide to base the lower for one reason or another, make sure you also export the upper from here because if you try to use the other file, it's not it has not been oriented. So we need to make sure that we export both of these models from this uh, when we're all said and done. Uh, so now that we are ready to go ahead and base it, what I'm going to do, and, and my preference, there's many ways to do this. Uh, I typically will... Um, go to, I will hit control A for all or select all and I will then go down to uh, extrude or press the D button and this right now the first thing I'm going to do is I want to go downward so I'm going to say negative 10. Now ten, this isn't the perfect value you might have to change. We're going to go from constant, we're going to change it to normal or I'm sorry, we're going to go to the y-axis. I'm sorry, it's normals for a different reason. And then the end type, we want it flat. You see how everything is equal distant right now? We want to go to flat, and it turns it like this. Okay. So now we have a nice flat-based model. You will see this little overhang down here. Um, that won't matter when you go to print. It is uh, literally not even a pixel thick, so the printer will completely ignore that. But if you really don't like that, 
hit accept, sometimes, probably the majority of the time, but not always, you can eliminate that by simply clicking edit, plain cut, and right now, where I, you can move it up and down with this arrow. Notice it's solid on the bottom. That's what we want. I will see if I can get it to error out. There are times where where you position it, it will actually become hollow again. And yeah, right, right there, it gets funky. You don't want that, of course, because that defeats the whole purpose uh, of extruding the model. So if I come up just a little bit, there, it's become solid. I can hit accept. And now I have a closed based model. Once again, I can hit Control E to export this, and it's a, a model that's very good for uh, uh, exporting, for doing a wax up on, uh, printing, however you, whatever you want to do with this. So real quick, let's go over the upper as well. Since we've got this in here, we might as well review how to close this model as well. We're going to say Control A for all. Click Extrude. Now this time we are going in the positive direction. We are going up. So I'm going to once again I'm going to start with 10. I'm going to click on Y axis. I'm going to click on normal or, or flat. I'm sorry. There you go again. And here's the trick. You notice that it's all inside out. That, well, you may not realize it. But that's why it's this hash marked pink. It's okay. We're going to fix that. I'm going to hit accept. Let it process. Give it a second. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and press Control A again to highlight the entire thing. And I'm going to come over to Modify, and I'm going to hit, uh, sorry, uh, Edit Flip Normals. Yes, Flip Normals. So now it is right side out. Once again, we have that little overhang, uh, not a problem. It doesn't look pretty if you're presenting it to patients or for whatever reason you don't like that. We can go ahead and do the same thing we did last time. Hit plain cut. And you see how it's actually cutting off the bottom and leaving the base. To fix that, there's this little kind of transparent looking arrow. Click on that and it flips over what's going to be kept and what's going to be lost. We've got the flat base. We don't want it you know, so close to the CEJ, so we're going to try to go up with it a ways and see how high we can go up before we end up making the model hollow. And let's just see how far, how much we can push the limits. Okay, that looks pretty high. We've barely clipped off anything, just enough to get rid of those little flanges. Um, I would honestly say you could go lower than this, but we were able to keep it closed, so that's pretty darn good. Uh, since this is for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to bother going any farther down. But now, we click Accept and wait for it to pr finalize the processing, and we now have a, a based model. If as I mentioned in another video, if you want to eliminate these different colors just for visual, when you export them as an STL, it does not preserve the face groups, the different colors. It will export as one solid color. But if you're still playing with it and you don't like that, just hit Control A. You can come down here to cr clear face groups, or you just get used to hitting Control Shift G. And now they are all gone. So there you go. You now have two based models and they are ready to print as is.